What's up guys, it's Dale the Airbrush Guy. Today I wanted to talk to you about, show you a little guide about how to create some glow in the dark, ultraviolet, UV reactive type of painting stuff like, uh, like that, something like that, right? We have fluorescent paints that are being shown on by ultraviolet light and it creates this awesome glowing effect. Um, I wanna to talk to you about how to make this effect happen uh, both in the airbrush graffiti world as well as just with acrylic paints or, or markers or brushes or lots of different mediums out there. Um, so first things first, let's talk about lighting. Um, what I have up here whoop, is ultraviolet lights. Um, there's a difference between ultraviolet lights and black lights. These are not black lights because they do show some visible light, but that's not a problem when you're doing this. Some visible light is nice so you can see what you're doing. But the ultraviolet aspect of these lights and many other lights, links in the description, um, create a glowing effect when shown on to fluorescent surfaces. Uh, the other important aspect of this is the paints. These are fluorescent paints. Pretty much any paint that you see, acrylic, airbrush, markers, whatever, that say fluorescent, usually uh, will glow under ultraviolet light, as you see here. So uh, test and make sure before you buy something on the internet or whatever, but most of your paints, um, highlighters for example, glow brightly under UV light. So we're going to paint something and I'm going to show you how to create these effects, some of the special things that happen um, when you use UV paint. Some colors blend differently together, they don't, they don't look the same in regular light versus ultraviolet light. So I want to talk to you a little bit about that. Um, so. Let's let's go. Let's get started. Uh, let's turn my lights back on. I have both lights on now. You got regular light and UV light. You can still see the glowing effect. Um, if I turn off the UV lights, you see that you have the regular colors. Uh, you can see both happening, and then you can see obviously the, the great difference when you only have the UV lights on there. I'm going to keep both on for now, and I'm going to fill up this airbrush bottle with this yellow paint. Um, again, this is an airbrush guide that assumes that you have some airbrush experience, um, but you can apply these techniques and concepts to any kind of art that you do. So I've got a white shirt. Uh, we're going to just paint a similar style onto this white shirt, and we're going to go through the process that I did on this one and see how it came into light <laughs> here. Um, and we're gonna compare the regular light versus the glow light. A couple steps during the process and see how things turn out as they go. So I'm gonna start with a yellow color because that's gonna be the base of my words. I'm just gonna write a simple word. I'm gonna write glow. Glow in a graffiti style. Bonus, this is how to make graffiti letters. Tip, um, I'm going to space out my letters like I did and then I'm gonna go straight into the black outlines for this video after I fix my airbrush. Ding! Okay. Moving on.
I'm gonna build up some layers of this green to cover up some of the overspray that came in with that purple. Fluorescent paints, at least in the airbrush world, are typically a little thinner than the other colors of paint. Uh, so you have to layer them a, a couple more extra layers to really get a deep, deep color. So there's that. All right, now some drips. Everyone likes drips. And a halo because, and drips on that too. And some of these. There. That works. Now, this is the thing that I want to show you after we take a look at this in only UV light. Dun 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 dun. It looks neat. It looks pretty sweet. Now, this is one of those special cases that I wanted to show you guys about. This is white paint. So pink white paint um, looks nice and bright in regular light. When I paint it on this shirt, it's going to look like a dark color. It's going to look almost black. Um, so I'm going to do an outline around the whole design, at least on the bottom part of this design. And in regular light, it's going to look like a nice bright white outline that's going to clean up the design. But in the UV light, it's going to look like a shadow. Check this out. Here we go. This is that white paint. You see that it is absorbing that ultraviolet light, not reflecting it as the other colors are. So we see a, a dark color here on the shirt instead of a nice white color. I'm pretty much going to use it as a shadow color for the whole design on all of this green. That'll be fine. And let's check it out in the regular light. Doing. See, it's just nice and bright. It's just, it's just white paint. See, instinctively, I would want to take this white paint and I would want to make highlights in my letters and stuff. I can't do that if I'm doing a UV reactive shirt because, again, it's going to look like a dark shadow. We don't want that. So instead of highlights, what can we do to accentuate some letters? Well, we can do some splatter. This nice bright yellow will look good during the splatter technique. Especially in UV light, a fluorescent light color with some splatter isn't going to show real well. In regular light, you can barely see these yellow splatters at all in regular light. But in UV light, they really stand out. So I can go to town with these and I can even put it on top of these other colors. That's a pretty cool effect. that isn't going to look too crazy. Once this dries, it'll look a little more muted. We'll see how that turns out. Uh, let's turn both lights on. I think that's pretty sweet. I think that's pretty neat. Now, we've done a white shirt. Let's see what we can do on a black shirt. I haven't tried this yet. We're gonna figure this out together. I'm gonna put a black shirt up here and we're gonna see how we can get, if we can get nice bright letters on a black shirt. I've got some ideas in mind. Let's see how they work. Okay, first thing I'm gonna test is just painting with fluorescent paint straight on the black without any kind of base, any kind of background. Um, I'm pretty sure, very sure, we're not gonna be able to see the colors brightly in regular light at all. But under this UV light, I'm thinking we can see a nice bright line. Let's see what happens. We'll start with yellow. Yellow was standing out well in the UV light. Let's see how it works here. I got both lights on now. Let's just do Test. Test. It looks very green. And without the UV light, we see almost nothing. Um, I can see a little bit of color. I think once it dries, it'll fade away mostly. Uh, really can't see anything is there without that UV light. But with that UV light, it stands out pretty well. Let's add some more layers to that same color. A 
Again, in the regular light, you don't see a whole lot. I mostly just see wet paint, but it's not very bright. And with the UV light, with both of them, you can see with the UV light, it really stands out. I'm gonna do an orange drop shadow on this text. Nothing. See, we see some very muted colors. You can see that in the real life light. Uh, but with those UV lights, there it is. Let's do both. Let's do a let's do a surprise. We'll turn off the UV lights entirely. I'm gonna paint something cool. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, well that was disappointing. So the pink didn't seem to, to really stand out at all. Check that out. See, while the, while the green and the orange did fine with one coat of paint, this pink doesn't want to stand out with one. And it ruined my whole cool surprise. So now I'm salty. What about this purple? I expect the same thing from the purple. The raspberry. What color didn't I use? Uh, yellow? I didn't use yellow. Oh, I did. This was yellow. Interesting. Okay, this is yellow paint, not green paint. I got, I got confused because this looks very green in this light. Uh, this is the green paint. I think that so far is the brightest after just one coat. Let's try my experiment again. Do, 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 do. Better, better. It's a little better. It's a little bit better. Now we gotta brighten up what we said because it's such an important message. Everyone needs to hear and read immediately. That Dale is cool. Um, so yeah, so let's look at, yellow looks to be the brightest color. Yellow and orange are working the best, um, while the other colors, especially pink, just was really muted. Let's do an experiment. Now, usually when you're doing a black shirt and you wanna put down a really nice white base to get the colors bright, but we know that white absorbs the paint or absorbs the light from the UV rays or whatever science stuff. So I don't know how this will work, but let's try it together. I'm just gonna do a circle. Interesting, it looks very purple. Very purpley. Pretty much the same exact color as the UV lights themselves. I wonder if that has some science stuff to do with it or whatever. Uh, yeah, it, looks, it just looks like regular white in, in real light, but with the UV light, it's purple. Blink, blink. And let's add some colors on top of it. That pink didn't stand out at all the first time. Let's see how it does in with the, with the white base to it. That's working out pretty good. I'm gonna blend that purple with or the pink with some yellow. Strange, very muted colors in regular light, very bright under UV light. All right, let's try that green with a white base. That stood out. And green and purple don't look good blended together, but we're gonna do it anyway. Very weird, very weird. So with what we learned, I'm gonna flip this shirt over and try to do a real life cool design on the black shirt, make sure we can actually make a, a good looking design 
on a black shirt. Let's do that. So I guess the first thing I'm gonna do is put a white base down because that really helped all the colors get nice and bright. Same process you would use on a, on a regular black shirt. With, with regular lighting, you put down a white base first. So I guess we keep it consistent with the same techniques here. Um, just write, write, what should I write? I'll write glow again. No. Light, I'll write light. So, do, 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 do. Pro tip on any black shirt that you're laying down a white base, you want to lay down a couple thin layers of white. You don't want to have an oversaturated shirt. Uh, you, want, you want thin layers. It's more like applying a, a, a base coat to your shirt. Not only is it the light color that you're painting on, but it's also the surface of the paint that you're creating that you'll be painting on top of. You don't want to ruin it by oversaturating it. And then it's important that you make that, let that paint dry before you layer other colors on top of it, or those colors are going to blend with it and it's not going to look good. Again, as with any black shirt, I'm laying down thin layers of color, letting them dry. There's a thin layer on top of each other. Every stroke that I do is another thin layer of paint. A uh, combination of time and air pressure from the airbrush is drying that paint as I'm going because I'm painting so slowly. Um, and work your way left to right and right to left, making sure to, to try to paint on the dry paint. Build up those layers and layers and layers on top of each other. I'm going to hit the top of this with some yellow. And then we'll do a green outline. Green showed up pretty well without the white base, so I'm gonna use that as an outline color. Pretty generic design of mine, but we're talking about the techniques here not trying to show you how to make super awesome cool artwork I guess I mean I kind of am but you know I mean, whatever all right here it is so yeah it works regular light without the black light at all you can't see that green we knew that from our previous experiment but with that black light it shines pretty bright and when you get into the club it'll be popping or whatever whatever the kids say I don't know but that's it that is what it is but yeah, that's that's everything I know and some we learned some together. It was a good time for both of us. Um, again, ultraviolet lights of any kind. I got some LED strip lights. Uh, these are these are mounted to the ceiling. They were like twenty bucks for both of these together, or something like that. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. And any kind of paint that's fluorescent, sometimes it's called hot colors. You mostly, usually it's fluorescent colors. Um, fluorescent is a really hard word to spell, something that I've learned recently making these videos. But really, yeah, it's that simple. Uh, it's nothing too crazy, just ultraviolet light and some fluorescent paint 
or some some highlighters. Uh, go experiment, go play with the colors. Things blend differently. Different mediums blend different ways. Different colors blend different ways in different light. You're gonna have to play around a little bit, but these are really fun to do. And for 20 bucks or so, you can get started doing this. Just turn off your lights, go in the bathroom in a dark room and flip the UV lights on only. It's really fun, you should do it. But that's it. I am Dale the Airbrush Guy. If you want to learn more about how to airbrush, how to make graffiti art, how to do UV lights, how to do other stuff and learn other art techniques and tricks and paint along with me, join me in live streams, etc. I am on YouTube everywhere. Please subscribe and maybe hit that bell, maybe even hit that join button too if you really want to. Um, please, I'm here to, to create some awesome artwork with you guys and talk to you guys and stuff. So, uh, thank you. Enjoy your day. And... I love you, goodbye. Just spilled pink paint everywhere. Bloopers. Light. Blow it up. Ouch. <laughs> this video is so dumb.